Welcome everybody. I wanted to jump in and just do a real quick update. I know yesterday I said it was going to be quick and it turned out to be eight minutes long. There's just so much activity. But the good news is, and you can see on the screen here, the fissure that opened up near the town. You can see the black area here. That was the fissure that started to flow into town. That has since more or less ceased. You don't see any lava uh, fountaining up from that fissure. This is the protection barrier wall, and then the lava has been flowing down and around. You can see that it's kind of curving down uh, towards the town at the end. And I believe you see here, you know, there's some construction equipment on the road here. That's the 43 going north. They've got another barrier and they've extended it across the road. And it's hard to tell, but I think they've got the barrier all across here protecting this part of the town. And one of the users, thank you for the comment, they commented it would be interesting to look at the topography and how it goes in this direction. And that was right on the money. That is what I want to talk about today. Very quickly, just go to the multi-view. And I like to start during the daytime so you can see the location where the camera is looking. So this is sort of the northern end of the most recent fissure. You can see that at sunset, there were still some lava fountaining, but very, very small volumes and there could be some flow underneath the lava the top gets a crust on it and there could be pathways underneath this new crust as uh, Sean Wilsey said this might be the youngest new rock on the planet earth but let's look at the topography and this is actually good news for the town as long as no new fissures open up if the fissures open up in the town one user commented about pumping seawater on to solidify and make a wall out of the lava by cooling it down. So they could potentially do that. The new eruption in the south started here and there's two or three or four, maybe four houses uh, that were affected up in this area. And this is a color contour map. So it's in feet. Unfortunately, I normally work in meters, but we can use that for a quick look. So red is higher ground. So you see these higher mountains. So we had the northern fissures up here here, protection wall across here and the southern fissure right here. If we look at the colors when they pop up again here, blue is lowest. So sea level, you know, is zero feet. And up here where the fissure erupted, we have 53 feet. That is the ground elevation is 53 feet above the sea level. Now there's a clearing through here and along and around this way where there's very little infrastructure built. There could be underground pipelines and there could be power lines and so on. And there's obviously the roads. You know, one user said we could dig a ditch and potentially you could dig a ditch down through here and direct if this fissure were to begin again, circulate it down around here. Now that ditch would probably fill up really quickly. The berm they have up here almost got overtopped with the fissures that erupted up, up top. So keeping the lava behind the berm is actually reinforcing that wall and new lava has to go north of that berm and the new lava that has hardened up there. So you could potentially fill up this low lying area here and as you see the lava is wrapping around the end and they've got a new protection wall that they've built protecting this home and these homes here and so what we see is that the ground over up here is that at that transition from green to blue this is 63 and over here the ground is getting lower okay you'll see that it's 30 feet difference since many viewers actually really enjoyed looking at the cross sections in Google Earth I'm going to show those again and extend those over to the west as well to really show how the topography looks so we looked at that topography map with the colors and the cross sections you know they will show the surface of the earth at various locations so you'll remember the green lines that we used in the last video check it out if you haven't done so already let's extend those over to the west side of the town of Grindavik and see what the topography really looks like and it's really easy to do actually in Google Earth you can download Google Earth Pro for free and you can come over here and there's this add path function click a few locations now we're going across the houses so there may be some irregularities there 
and we can kind of come up over into this area. That'll create a path, and there's many things that we can actually do to interact with that path. You know, you could mark the lines. So actually I've marked the barriers here and the fissure locations using path function as well. But if you right click on it and show elevation profile, then the elevation profile pops up from below. There's a large flat area over here on the west, but actually there's a hill. This portion, the west portion of the town is in a slightly elevated location. So the maximum here where the red arrow is pointing on the map or the line is on the cross section is at 26 meters elevation. And if we move along, you'll see that actually it is going down all the way over here and it's 20 meters elevation. So there's six meters uh, change from where the red arrow is there to the edge of town. So that directing the flow, and I think that's what they've been trying to do with the barriers. And I believe I could extend this barrier over here as well. I believe it's crossed over this road. And so they're trying to direct the flow over to this direction on this line. Now here we see a slightly different story. In town at Highway 43 is actually a low point, 16 meters, and the west part of Grindavik is on the high. There's another low, and then this is a high point over here, and then down into a low area that was 17 meters and I believe this was 20 meters over here. So it is coming down 20 meters here, 17 meters here, it's coming down. Now there is some infrastructure here as well, trying to guide the flow along and into these low lying areas is potentially what they're trying to do. But we're only talking a few meters of elevation change along this line here. So it's relatively flat ground and that can be difficult to guide, but if they can get a good size barrier built, the lava will spread out in this location. There's lots of communication towers in this location. I'm not sure what all these other towers are for. It's hard to say, but that's outside my expertise. So I just wanted to add that element with the various cross sections you can do one down here going along the highway as well to sort of see how the ground is shaped down in this direction. It really adds a nice view of the ground when you're really looking at a cross sectional view and the top of that line is the ground surface elevation. So let's look here. we we'll come along that highway and in around here where we've got some lakes, there is a low point along there. So this deflection wall coming down around here would be very good because there's a lot less infrastructure on the coastline here if we can guide the flow over in this direction. That is, of course, if these fissures in the north here near Hagafell become active again or more active. There's very little flow happening from here and it seems that the smaller fissure in the south right north of the town of Grindavik has ceased. So that is good news for the town. So I think they've done a great job to construct that protection wall. If the lava does come down around and fill up over here, they can direct it over to this low lying area. And there'll be a few places, you know, there's a bit of blue here, a little bit of blue there. They may be going to work on protecting these little areas where the lava might try to turn into the town itself and keep it flowing down along here. So one user, thank you for pointing that out. This is an important consideration and probably the, one of the considerations for constructing the protection wall and sort of trying to guide the flow over this way. Unfortunately, that fissure opened up in town south of the protection wall. Consider the distance here, the fissure in the north, and then we have the other fissure here. If we take a similar distance, hopefully new fissures would open up in the sea and then the town will be saved. So that's the best we can hope for. We have to keep an eye on ground surface fluctuations, those GPS ground movement measurements and the earthquake activity. And as you see on the live stream, now it's the time for the pressure to build up again. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Keep an eye on the situation later in the week. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.